Hello class, my name is Anthony Imbury, and this is my workshop. Today I will be talking about World War II, which I know most of you already know about. But I will be talking about the more minuscule things that led up to World War II, like Adolf's personal life and how prepared the German army was compared to the rest of the world. I will also lead into Denmark's involvement in the entire fiasco and how they were affected by the situation as well. Let's get started, shall we? Hello everyone, it's Kermit the Frog here, and I'm going to be taking over for about 25% of the uh, video. Let me just read off of this uh, script here, because I have no idea why I'm here. First off, let's talk about Hitler. The great for himself, at least according to his loyal followers. His childhood, admittedly, was not as great as his leadership was considered to be. To start off, when Adolf was a child, his emotions constantly clashed with his father's, especially in the degree of Adolf wanting to pursue the arts. Oh, what a poor boy! As to having his feelings crushed by his own father, or was it enough at that point? His brother, younger brother Edmund, uh, passed away in 1900. He was only 11 years old. I was talking about Adolf. Uh, this event furthered his detachedness from others and his introvert-like nature. But alas, let us talk about another list downy topic. I know that doesn't sound very uh, sad because I made this voice, but oh well. Uh, like uh, Adolf's interests, because did you know he's uh, apparently pretty good at art? But uh, speaking of those interests, at an early age, Adolf showed an interest in German uh, nationalism. He even went so far as to neglect his own culture. That's not good. Alas, also, going back to one of his other interests, the art, he tried to apply for art school twice, but was rejected twice. As well, before this happened, his dad died in 1903, but his event let his mother tell him that he could drop out of school. <laughs> Sadly, four years after his dad's death, his mom died too. At this point in his life, Hitler was passed from homeless shelter to homeless shelter as he had no money except from an orphan's pension and from selling postcards. Very sad. After experiencing all this, Hitler awoke a sudden hatred inside of him, directed to Jews for reasons not well known. Also, there was a Now, I know most of you probably still don't care about the hearing all that very sad info about Hitler because he was a very bad guy, and I can't say I don't agree with you. You know, he probably persecuted uh, and killed many frogs, too. But uh, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, this one's getting a little repetitive, according to um, the script. Okay. Alright, guys, uh, let us continue. Wait, 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 what's happening here? <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? It's Scarce here. Just kidding. I'm finally, um, back, I, I guess. That was, that was odd. Felt like someone took over my body. But alas, let us continue with our very intriguing project video. And it's very well composed, too. Don't forget about that. I know someone in the crowd, you know, you there, you must be interested in how Hitler was able to unite the currently in the Great Depression Germany into one of nation's most powerful armies. Well, the answer, he was just a good speaker and planner, in all honesty. He inspired the people of Germany to start working again and made the National Socialist German Workers, I'm not going to say that part because, no, uh, or Nazi for short, out of a German Workers' Party, which of he was high-ranking. Um, pretty soon, as you would guess, because you know, it had to start somewhere, the group gained traction and lots of people joined. Adolf had the intent to go to war and make Germany be seen as the most powerful region in the world. As well, it was not that Germany was the most prepared European country to go to war, which is why so many were overtaken. When the war did start, Europeans were surprised by the way that Adolf soldiers fought. It was something very new to them because they hadn't changed their fighting style since World War I. They didn't think there would be a need to, because they didn't think there would be any other large wars. They didn't even think of using vehicles and airplanes, which were newly invented, like Adolf did, which also gave him another advantage. Oh no, it looks like I've turned into Solid Snake. 
Well, anyway, let's get on with the reading. Alright, enough about Hitler and Germany. Let's talk about Denmark. Well, first off, the reason that Germany slash Hitler wanted control of them was because they were his master race. Their blonde hair and blue eyes made him think they were descendants of the Aryans, so he didn't want to hurt them. Well, that's not very nice to people with brown hair and not blue eyes. As well, acquiring the land apparently gave them a flank, which would allow them to capture Norway, who was already trying to fight them off in the process. Just to add extra information, Denmark's leader at the time immediately surrendered to Adolf when they arrived at Denmark, as he knew he stood no chance, as his army was too small. Another reason that the people of Denmark were so favored by the Germans was because of the amount of food they produced. They were able to feed the Germans whenever they wanted to. During their time of being occupied by German forces, some of the population of Denmark became Nazi supporters. Those who didn't were sometimes killed if they attacked officers or hit Jewish people, which isn't very nice. Otherwise, they could live normal lives, as the Germans stated, even though it was definitely far from normal, and I can agree on that. Anyways, back to the Nazi supporters. Did you know there are still some in Denmark? One of them even protects the Queen, and openly supports the neo-Nazi group, as well as celebrating Hitler's birthday. There is even a group called the DNSB, Danish Neo-Nazi Party. They have tried countless times to win elections, which of course resulted in failure. There was even an entry with the party's leader, Joni Hansen, who made a radio station called Radio Oasis, which runs up to 90 hours of neo-Nazi content per week. I don't see how they allow these things to still exist. They should honestly get rid of them. They're not very nice. Now for the final topic, short and sweet. How is Denmark's army now compared to before when they easily surrendered? Well, the answer is, a lot better. Following the war, people questioned Denmark's other control border. They stated they wanted to operate as their own group, but the Danish officials weren't having it at all. So, with that problem out of the way, in June 1945, they joined the UN at the time of boasting their defenses. Four years later, they also joined NATO. This event graciously strengthened their military. Even the USA volunteered to set up bases on Danish territory, but the Danish declared the offer. A couple of years later, 1953 to be exact, they realized maybe their constitution needed a little revising as well. And they did exactly that. And also, in addition, 20 years later, the first female succession came into royal power after Margaret II's father, King Frederick IV, passed. Oh, well, alrighty then. Let's uh, put an end to this very well put together video. Um, anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed. I know it was kind of boring, but uh, I couldn't. I tried to make it enjoyable. But, you know, it's information about history. No one really cares about that. But, uh, you know, anyways. Uh, bye, Brofist.